Hi there, it's Jewel here. Um, down in my studio, this is the very last video I'm doing here because I'm all packed up and ready to move to BC. But uh, a few people have been asking about how I do little pebbles and rocks. And uh, since I've got everything packed up, all I have is some pictures to show you of some of the paintings that I've done. So these are six inch ceramic tiles and uh, it's just a picture of what you would see looking down if you're walking on the beach or, or wherever. So I've got one on the go here. I already got started but uh, I'll just show you how I'm going to add in some more stones. Some are laying on top, some are underneath and uh, let's see here. We'll go with another, this is mushroom color over on this side so Maybe I'll do one over there. And just using my little dental tool, put a drop on, kind of tipping my tile so it doesn't run away on me. So it looks like it wants to go over this one, so I'm just going to let it do that. Using my dental tool to define the edge. And maybe I'll use a little can air there while it's real wet, see if I can get some lines or shapes going in. Okay, I think I should put on my glove for this part because I don't want to go to bed with inky fingers tonight. Okay, so a little bit of alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, just on my finger on paper towel here. And just clean up that edge. And give it some more air because it's still moving a bit. Okay, so basically you're just moving the ink off, take it away, and there we go for that one. So that one's going over that one, maybe I'm going to have another one here that overlaps this one. So. I think I'll go with the same color as I have over there. Just put a little bit on. Maybe I'll use a Q-tip to spread it around a little bit. Give it a bit of air. And you can use a Q-tip to clean up too. Sometimes that may work a bit better. There we go. Okay, let's see. I think I'll do another one of these with the stripes just to show you how that's done. So that was slate. I can find it. There it is. And maybe this one will come this way a bit. Okay. You don't need to use a lot of pressure on your air because then you get fingers of ink flying in, flying in every direction. So there, I don't mind that. Oops. Okay, I'm just clean up the edge there. So to get the white lines going through it, just using a 
little dental tool here, micro brush, and just pull a couple lines through there like that. I know there's a name for these kind of rocks, but I have no idea what it is. There. Maybe a few little spots, maybe another line over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Clean that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, maybe I'll add a little bit of a Looks like a bit of a light reflection there. Now, I have on this paper some that have just um, speckles. There's one underneath, and there's one on top there. But you need to have color all around. It's hard to do it against just the white. So maybe I'm going to clean up a spot right in the middle, maybe right in here. And I can just do that the same way I've been doing, just... Um, top right there. And I don't have to take out all the white. I don't have to make it completely white because it's going to have a bit of color in it anyway. So to do that, get those speckles, get my liner brush and some of my pitch black here. Okay, so I just want little speckles, little spots here and there. And looks more like an egg of some kind right now, so I'm just going to break that up a little bit with a bit of alcohol. And Q tip. Also use a little micro pen. This just a little art pen. Uh, micro pen, you can get them at art stores. They aren't very expensive. There, maybe a little bit of this is the signal uniball pen. Get a little bit of weight showing up there. Works better on color, as you can see. Oh, I like it on the black. Um, maybe I'll clean up that edge like that. So anyway, that's kind of... Uh, basically how I do the rocks. Um, once you get them all in place, you're going to see little spots like this where you can either fill it in with some shadow. I guess I should put a different color under there first. Maybe I'll use I got pebble here. It's kind of a greenish color, but um, now you don't want to have very much on your tip. There we go. 
I'll dry that. So it looks like there's another rock under there. And if I want to just shade that in a little bit. And just add some speckles on one side. I wouldn't fill the whole thing in. And let's see, we'll do a different color over here. Maybe about ginger. I guess I could have used the same color I have over there, but I'll put a different different one over here. And do the same thing. Just maybe if you do a whole bunch of little dots, little points in there, you can fill in right into the corner. It'll be darker and a little lighter as you're coming out. Anyway, that's how it's done. I'm not going to do the whole tile because it would take me all night. But So just um, play around, have fun. I've got different colors on, on here. Um, this one's got some greens and some blues in it. Over here I've got an orange piece. And uh, that's not a very big image of that painting. It's actually 10 by 4 inches, that one. So... Lots of different ways to arrange your rocks. So if you want to do some shadows, it's kind of hard to do it while they're unsealed. So what I'll do is I'll seal it with two or three coats of Kamar. You want to hand me the Kamar there? So this is the sealant that I use for the, the first sealant. So if you give about three coats of Kamar, wait a few hours between each spray, then you can go in with maybe some slate, and you can see where I put the shadows here. And you can also use the alcohol ink pens if you just get a light shade of pale gray. You'll be able to color in a shadow and not have it interfere with, with the piece that you're drawing on. It won't push the ink away, it won't disturb it. So that's how that's done. Anyway. Here you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.